guys, we're back with another video that is highly, highly requested. And I want to thank you guys so much for your kind words and support. A lot of people were wondering my experience in technical interviews and if I have any advice for you guys. And generally, I've only spent a semester really interviewing. So I'll tell you guys what I've learned. And I'm sure many of you also have some experiences. So I'd love it if you guys would leave those down below as well, because I'm sure those will help other people too. So. Generally, the first few weeks of school, I can only speak from my school's point of view, and that's Georgia Tech. And at Georgia Tech, the first few weeks of school are very... There are a lot of companies coming in. There are a lot of people running around, you know, trying to understand how certain things work. And there are a lot of freshmen, and everyone's just kind of bustling. And during that time, there are a lot of interview workshops, and people just trying to learn what's expected of them in the interview process because a lot of seniors and juniors are looking for jobs and a lot of underclassmen and sometimes even upperclassmen are looking for internship positions. During that time, uh, Google was very active on campus. So there were a lot of Google interview workshops. And at those workshops, Google would tell people things that are specific to their interview processes. But I took a lot of things from those and applied it to my other interviews as well because they're generally umbrella advice. So. Um, there are multiple different steps in a technical interview. So usually initially you have either coding challenge, which is where the company sends you a specific kind of a test almost, that you have a specific amount of time to finish and you have to write code to answer their certain questions. And I think they have test cases and depending on each place, they'll have a different format of it. But I took one and into it and that was pretty, pretty straightforward, not too painful. Um, I had like an hour and a half to finish three questions. Um, you have to write some code, you have to think through it, you know, your logic is showing through, all of that. And then if that goes well, they'll reach out to you for an interview. Um, then you have, or even prior to that, you have a phone screen where they basically call you on the phone and they're like, hello, how are you? You know, you have a little chat. You probably go through your resume or answer a few umbrella-like questions for them. Um, like explain a few concepts to me or all of that. Or you can have a phone screen where you're coding on a Google Doc. Uh, you're never you're not really gonna know which one you're gonna have um, then they're going to probably ask you to solve a question so that's pretty similar to the one-on-one -on -one where you're basically coding or writing pseudocode for a specific question in that case you can choose a language you want to code in so you usually it's a good idea to have a primary and a secondary language that you're really really strong in that you can answer most questions to prepare for these I highly suggest using coding bat um, where they're basically a bunch of really basic coding exercises. I think it's pretty much Java and Python based, but a lot of the questions I've gotten were pretty much straight from there or spin-offs of those questions. So really work on those. I think I'll leave the link, I'll leave the link to that down below. It's like an online um, exercise place. Um, another thing I highly suggest using is Cracking the Coding Interview. I'll leave a picture of that here somewhere. It's a book that has a bunch of practice problems in it and it also has a bunch of little bit of summaries on various topics which is really useful for those of us who haven't taken too many CS classes but want to know the like the basics of those topics also knowing a little bit of data structures and sorting algorithms cannot hurt you I would know basic stacks queues um, linked lists binary search trees um, you know insertion selection sort merge sort quick sort just a few of those to just kind of you know be able to make your logic around those because a lot of companies will ask questions that are basically modeling those data structures and noticing that will get you a few points um not that there's really a rubric or anything as far as i know but just you know it'll get you a few brownie points with your interviewer also basically in terms of that you have to talk through your answers so you have to when they give you your question ask them all the basic questions about that basically ask them to feed you as much as many parameters as possible if they ask you a question like you're given a list of, of numbers and you need to sort them from least to greatest ask them are these integers are they doubles are they negative integers are they positive integers um can i like model it. can I assume that it'd be an infinite number of numbers or an, um, like a large number of numbers or a small number of numbers and your interviewer will tell you basically what you should consider when you're writing your writing your code sometimes they'll be like it doesn't matter 
and at that point it didn't really help but it's good to ask those kind of questions you need to talk through your code um, if, especially if you're on the phone because they can't see you in person so they don't know that you're thinking they don't know you're still there they don't know that you're engaged talk to them it's hard and you need to practice um, coding talking through it so I basically had a few friends just ask me questions and I'd code them on a whiteboard and they would ask me questions while I was coding and that was really helpful um, also yeah, that's basically it. I mean, phone screens and in-person aren't too painful. Um, usually, I highly suggest knowing every single thing in your resume deeply and being able to answer the about me question. Like, tell me a little bit about yourself. And then you need to be like, um, I'm Ashwini, I'm 18. What else do you want to know? You know, not really like that. You know, you need to. You need to have a bunch of like, I really love CS. I started CS when I, I started learning like real computer science when I was in high school and I really enjoyed it because of this I got into CS because of this I'm still in CS because of this you know just a bunch of like keep, just give them a little bit about your CS background and why you're doing certain things and talking about your projects yeah really preparation is key for a technical interview but also your body language is really crucial so I've seen a lot of people go into technical interviews and they're really stressed they're very tense they're very nervous and all that comes off and it just makes you seem really cold and I mean, people understand it, but it's also just kind of, you need to go in a little bit chill, like you're confident in yourself, even if you're not, just go and be like, you know what, I'm Ashwini, I got this, you know, they're gonna like me, I'm definitely qualified, like, we'll be fine. And if they don't, they don't, it's totally okay, like, no hard feelings, like, it's totally chill. So, you go in, and generally, try and give off the vibe that you would if you were actually going into work there. And that way people would get the gist of like what you'll be like in their team. Are you friendly? Are you generally amicable? Are you able to answer questions? Ask questions? Do you seem to have any like ego issues, arrogance, all of that? Don't don't have any of that. Like that's all negative and should not be there. But you should be able to answer questions, be curious, be friendly, be supportive, a good team member. All of those are just very important that you convey. In terms of my own personal technical interview experiences, I've had a few. Um, I had a few coding challenges that I worked on. They asked me to code palindrome. They asked me to code some other questions. So basically study coding bad a lot. Um, then after that, you have a few in-person interviews. I basically had one with Apple where I had an in-person in -person one. He asked me to code like a spin-off of Fibonacci sequence. That's also on Coding Bad, I believe, so I would really study Coding Bad if I haven't already mentioned that to you. Um, also, after that, I had an in-person, I had an, two phone screens. So I had a phone screen with the manager of a, of a team at Apple. And the way Apple works is they have people, they have various teams in Apple, and they basically have this huge bunch of resumes. And every time a spot opens up or they have an opening in a team, the manager will go and find a bunch of resumes that are appropriate for their what they're looking for and then they'll reach out to those people so you could be reached out to at any time um i was reached out to by the manager and that he was very friendly and i talked to him for some time and he was he was just really he just talked about his project and what i would be doing for them and what kind of things he was expecting from me and then he asked me a few questions about how i would solve certain problems just to see how i think um yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that because I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to share and all of that, but generally he was pretty friendly. I would highly suggest in those kind of interviews really convey how you think and how, what kind of a team member you'll be um, because that's really all they can get from your voice is your tone and your general curiosity and your vivaciousness and just generally what kind of person you are. Um, after that, I had another interview with a member of the team. Um, he asked me more detailed questions and... He asked me basically a very broad tell me about yourself and then I basically went into details on each of my projects and he and basically interrupted me whenever he had questions. And that's good. Like have a conversation with them. Let them ask you deep detailed questions about your project so that you can not only answer those questions for yourself, but you can also learn how to answer them eloquently for other people. Because most of the time they're gonna ask very similar questions. They're gonna be like where did you store this data? How did you process this data? What what were your other possible algorithms that you could have used to solve this problem? Um, what were some challenges you faced? What were some things you really enjoyed? Why did you choose to work on this problem? Has this problem had any positive influence on your community? Did you really help anybody? Um, all those kind of things. Um, 
They also ask if you work in a team or if you work with a professor, you know, can they contact this professor for this information? Also have links on your GitHub or somewhere online so that they can download your code and run it and see if it works and all that. Like, it, obviously, if that's applicable, um, do that. That's very powerful and they really like that. Um, generally, he was really friendly and really nice. I had a pretty positive Apple interview experience. After that, he asked me to solve a riddle and um, that riddle was mainly a model of a sorting algorithm. So know and be able to connect the dots on those kind of things and be able to be like, oh, that looks like merge sort. Like those kind of things are really powerful. And I think that's one of those things that comes with experience and comes with time. But I didn't recognize that it looked like merge sort, but I basically solved it like I did merge sort. And then I was, then he like kind of was like, does this look like something that looks familiar to you? And then I was like, Oh, it does. Like, it looks like Merge Sword. So, those kind of things. After that, I basically got an offer. So, I didn't really have too many steps with Apple. I only had three. I know friends who've had multiple, and I know people who've had multiple technical interview questions, and then maybe one behavioral. I kind of had a mix in all of them. So, everyone has a different interview experience at Apple, and I generally am really grateful for their support, and I really. I'm really grateful in general for Georgia Tech's preparation and the amount of time and energy they took to train us all to be um, good technical interviewers and generally know our stuff because I know a lot of schools don't really do that and I didn't really think of that when I was choosing a school but generally the resources we've gotten at Georgia Tech are very good and I'm very proud to to go there so yeah so if you, any of you have any questions leave them down below um, I hope this video was helpful. If any of you also have any technical interview experiences that you want to share, horror, positive stories, I don't really care, share them down below. I think that'd be a funny thing to experience and also to help other people. Um, don't forget to like, comment if you enjoyed this video and subscribe. Um, subscribing basically allows you to get notifications every time I post a new video. So maybe if I film the video you request, I you'll get notifications. So. I really appreciate all your support and if you guys have any questions or you wish I'd answered a specific question in this that I didn't, leave a comment down below. I feel like I've told you guys to leave so many comments down below, but basically just tell me what you guys think and I'll agree. I really appreciate it. So I'll see you guys later. What makes me happy is when people are happy and when people accomplish amazing things and when people are nice to each other and when people leave nice comments, you know, below and um, I don't know, just generally happy things.